Hi everyone, this is my first video of this kind, hopefully all goes well. This is my Ishin Goggle 2, and this one is broken. What we're gonna do is open it up, see what we can salvage, uh, then we'll open a new one up, install a DVR, and see if all works out. So why is this one broken? What happened was, after about two weeks, it randomly turned itself off on a fresh battery. Now, I was lucky it wasn't during flight, but within the first 30 seconds or so when I was setting up, I didn't really think much of it, it was weird, definitely, uh, but I just unplugged the battery, plug it back in, and it worked fine, and I flew for the rest of the day. Now, the next time that problem happened, it actually didn't power back on at all. Um, so, I don't know if any of you have experienced this problem, do let me know if any of you fixed the problem, uh, definitely let me know because I would love to bring this back to life, otherwise, oh well, spare parts. So, I already opened this one up, cut the polystyrene, unplugged some of the things inside, so if you want to see me open one properly, uh, I'll do that with a new one coming up, but for now, let's see what's inside. It's a pretty simple construction, polystyrene body, uh, these edges are welded, so you gotta cut them. We've got the diversity module, Fresnel lens, and now there's the screen with the control and your channel selections and stuff. Pretty simple. I'm gonna keep the polystyrene body because it's really easy to crush and I put everything in my backpack and just in case I crush the next one. This bit here is very uh, flimsy looking so I just wanna make sure I have a spare. I messaged Banggood, that's where I bought it from uh, and after showing them what's up they agreed to send me a new one. Luckily I didn't have to send this one back. Let's just open the new one up and see if it works. New goggles. I'll use the new battery, might as well. Make sure everything works. We have LED and we have snow. Um, so this is functional. Now, I'm gonna grab a quad, just one of my micros here. Nice, so we've got a picture. Uh, the goggles are functional. I'm pretty happy. Now let's take this apart and install a DVR. Before we're gonna do that, there are a few considerations. You're gonna need to split the two halves of the body of the goggle apart. You're gonna do that by cutting into the polystyrene, but you don't want to cut too deep, otherwise you're risking cutting some of the internal components. The most sensitive areas are at the front. That's where the diversity module is sitting. You don't want to cut into the PCB. And on the right side of the goggle looking in, the area right here is where the cable is tucked in for powering the goggle. You're gonna need to be very careful and just pry it apart and see that you're not cutting into it. We're gonna be installing the Ishin Pro DVR. This lets us record flight footage on a micro SD card because the goggle don't come stock with a DVR recorder. I highly recommend you to never pull by the cable. These plugs are really small but they're in there really, really tight. You can see I already ripped one of the cables out because they were just so tight in there and I tried to pull it out and one of the cables came loose. So I recommend take a flathead screwdriver or something just to pry it out by the plastic. That way you're not gonna damage any of the cables. This takes five volts and we need to make sure we use the right pins on the diversity module to power this thing. I'm just gonna open it up and then bench test, make sure once we pull the components out that we didn't break anything in the process, and then we'll just wire in the DVR and hopefully we're good to go. All right, so the goggles are taken apart. We took off the top half. Uh, now we're just gonna test that everything still works, that I didn't damage anything with the knife. Just to be safe, the LED is on. We have snow, so I'm gonna unplug it 
so that we don't short anything out while power is plugged in. So these are the two diversity receiver modules. This one is from the failed goggles and this is from this brand new one. And to me they look identical, except for this new one has a little port right here and if we read the PCB it says video out, ground, ground, 5 volt out. And I'm wondering if instead of tapping into all these random pads on the board, whether we can use this or not. I did some tests off camera just to check out what's going on with this video out and actually there is no video out on this pin. The only video you can get out from these receivers is on the pin 2 or second from the right over here. This video out is probably an artifact of this board being designed for multiple applications where this port is an input port and this one is an output because it does say video in on this pin, video out here, 5 volts out, 5 volts. Now these 5 volt pins are connected whereas this 5 volt and this VCC are not even though they both give out 5 volts. Now what I'm gonna do is use this 5 volt pin for the DVR module, but I'll use this one for my ground. Both of these are connected, so it doesn't really matter which one, I just don't want to solder these two pads too close together. I was thinking about the DVR functionality, and initially I was gonna wire it in passively so that it only records footage, but then I decided to actually use the functionality of being able to review the footage and play it back. The problem with that is this module introduces quite a bit of latency, so to mitigate that, I'm gonna wire it in this switch, which basically is gonna switch between the video coming into the module and out of the module, versus the video just going straight through the receivers into the goggles. That way, whenever I either lose the model or wanna play back the flight footage, I can switch it to the DVR mode and play it back, and then when I'm flying, I can just go through a pass-through mode. This is what we wanna build. DVR obviously want to record, so we need a signal straight from the receiver at all times. Now what this switch is gonna ensure is that we can exclude the DVR from the signal path from the receiver to the screen, but we still want to be able to preview some of the recordings we've made on the screen. That's why we're gonna have a two position switch where in one position it's gonna connect the receiver directly with the screen and in the other position it's going to connect the DVR with the screen and that's basically what we want. I couldn't really capture the soldering process because at this scale it's quite hard to get the camera to focus. I just went ahead and finished it off. Basically this is the DVR module. The video is coming in. It's going to be able to record. Now this is the video out. It goes out to the switch and here's the signal path from the receiver to the to the screen and this is we splice into it with the switch so in one position it's gonna go from DVR to the screen in the other it's gonna go straight from the receiver onto the screen and I already tested this to make sure it all works so what I'm gonna do is put it back together and then show you what we ended up with so the goggles are back together I just used hot glue to join the two halves and for the DVR module, I didn't want it hanging off the side or have cables everywhere, so I fed the cables through a hole in the front and cut out a bit of the polystyrene so that it sits nice and flush. And the little switch is here on the side, so we can switch between DVR mode and pass-through mode. This is what you see inside the goggles. I'll turn a quad on. We're in pass-through mode, and if I flip a switch right here, we're in DVR mode. You can see the, uh, the OSD, the recording, the timer, and if I start the timer by pressing the button, we have started recording. There we go. I'll stop it, and we can go back into the pass-through mode. So that lets me switch between DVR and flight so that I can make sure I am recording before I take off and then switch right back and have no extra latency on my video. And we're done. Enough of this, let's do a test flight.